Hey friends, it's Marianne from my Travelers Crew YouTube channel. We're also on Instagram, so if you want to see more behind the scenes, um, real time um, pictures and video clips, please feel free to follow us there. There is Cam. We are in uh, my backyard, and I'm going to be setting up my canvas belt tent from White Duck Outdoors. I have the 4M1, which is 13 feet. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to set this up to give you guys like a real time um, view of it. Also, I'm going to be doing a really short review of the tent as well. This is about my third time, third year, excuse me, using this tent. So I've had some time to kind of use it in rain, storm, wind, hail, sunshine, on the lake, on the beach, in the forest, and a um, variety of different climates and environments. So I kind of have more of a personal touch with this. So if you're interested in listening to my review and seeing how I I set up this tent please keep watching oh and don't forget to subscribe and like the video you guys are watching but you're not subscribing what's up with that okay so the first thing you do is check the ground to make sure there's no sticks or rocks or poop where you want to put your tent and then we get a tarp um, with the bell tent and at, with other tents as well not just with bell tent they have um, footprints that you can buy to go with that if you want to spend the extra money and some come with it uh, my white duct tank did not come with a footprint you have to buy an extra one I just use the park and Harvard Freight Okay. There's like little holes in here. Okay. So now we're gonna get the tent, which is extremely heavy. Pop that on here. Bring you guys closer. All right now we have the tent on here. So this is white duck outdoors cam. No. It comes with a mallet that um, has been beaten up all the time. It comes with a steak bag. I bought um, these little steaks don't do well in um, hard soil. So I bought these states from Harvard Freight that hold up much better. And these states come with it. And you'll see where I put these um, candy cane looking states. I did buy some more from Harvard Freight because you can always use states. I'm just gonna set that up here. And the mallet. So that comes with it. Uh, sometimes this came with it too as well, but you see what happened to it when I was on a rocky ground. So kept that to show you guys. <laughs> That's why I always buy new finger steaks every year. If you have a Harbor Freight, they come in a pack of one, two, three, four, five, six. I think it's like four dollars. Maybe five for tax. I don't remember. But, um, oh, and they're taped together and they're fun. 
I use these kind of states to go around the outside of the tent and I use the candy cane states to do the um, guidelines. There are a lot of guidelines with this bell tent. I mean, that's the biggest downfall or the biggest um, con for me, um, that is. It's all the guidelines and that can be a hazard, but um, you just have to teach your children to pay attention. The next con is the weight. It's extremely heavy. And if you ever have to pack this bad boy up wet, it's even heavier. Always pack it up dry. Never pack your tin up wet. Always, always pack it dry. It comes in this um, duffel bag that has a logo on it. This tent's about like, like I said, about three years old. It's gonna last you a lifetime if you take care of it. The top is a bit bigger and obviously it's a rectangle. the door up towards you. I may set the door up that way just because I'm able to do the dial lines out this way. I'm assuming and neighbors are walking by they won't think I'm crazy. So I'm just looking for the door which I think is over here. So this is the um, part for the stove. I have not used the stove. There's not extra to buy the stove patch, it automatically comes with the tent. I don't have experience with any other type of tent but the bell tent. Where is the door? Position the door the way you want. Like I said, I'm positioning the door up this way so the gun lines can go out there. I'm going to spread the tin out. Spread the tin out. the tent spread out pretty good so I'm gonna start staking use these and the mallet I stake in opposite direction so I'm gonna stake the door down and I'm gonna go in the back side sides like that this ensures that your tent isn't leaning on one side or another and it may not be that important other tents but in this tent because there's a center pole that holds it up you don't want your center pole leaning like this because if you do have rain or heavy winds or whatever the situation may be, it's more likely to collapse and fall down if it's not properly staked up. So your center pole and your front pole should always be properly straight. And to do that is staking it properly the first time. Because if you don't stake it, you have to do all these unstakes out again and redo it. So do it right the first time, you won't have to take it apart when it's windy and raining and that's a pain in the tail. Grab my shoes. I have to sneeze. <coughs> Bless me. Man, what are you doing?
I'm not going to be trying to pound these all the way to the ground and super secure it. I'm just demonstrating here. your states in it's always better to pound them in at an angle versus straight it's easier for them to come out if they're at a um, you're pounding them in at an angle like that could easily knock them out a hammer wouldn't be a bad idea to have either because then that allows you to hook this doesn't really have a hook oh maybe you could do the handle i don't know we'll find out No. Come here, Cam. Cam, come here. Nobody's up there. Nobody's in the house. Yep, nobody's in the house. Setting up camp is always my favorite part of camping. Now that I have like the major corners in, I can kind of go around. I'll probably do those two corners, um, the one there and the one over here next. I'm down here. Okay, we'll okay, go around and sure I got them all, but I know I have probably a couple more to do.
Nets is the guidelines. And oh no, Nets is the center pole. And then it's um, the front pole and the guidelines. Sometimes I have to do the front guidelines first. So I'm gonna move the camera so y'all can see that. All right, let's get the center pole. Open this up first. Oh, pro tip. Stake this down while the door is zipped. Because if you stake it down while the door is open, you may stake it too wide. And when it's time to close the door and you get in the tent, it will not close properly all the way. So when you're staking out the bottom and you're staking out the guidelines, make sure you close the tent. Just close the door. The center pole comes in a separate bag, the center pole and the front pole that is, comes in a separate bag, white duck loader, um, they could all fit in that same bag, but I just find it easier when packing to put this on the floor of the car because that, because you can kind of smush the tent in a little bit and it's hard to smush the tent in when you have these poles. Now, one thing I will say that I don't like, there is an elastic that kind of got broken in here, um, some kind of elastic that keeps the poles together uh, and without falling apart as easily. So, for example, this, Piece right here that you see I don't know if you can see that that's supposed to be in this one and I believe in that other one too but for whatever reason it um, snapped out so I'm actually gonna contact them about that and see if they can send me another pole um, with another elastic because that is um, very hurtful if this falls on your foot ask me how I know this has a hook so this is how you know it's a top so the idea is that you can hang stuff from it and they make, um, I guess that's like famous So bill. You see people who have the lanterns and stuff. I don't do that with a child in my tent. That's just, that's just too much. Okay. I don't do that. But um, make sure you're holding on to your pole if it doesn't have it like I do. And you're going to go in with the top loop here facing up. And try not to get eaten alive by mosquitoes. So you can see this one pulls up. I'm going to go ahead and um, move the camera up. Oh, you can see it. So you can see it a little better. Let's see. You can do that. Look up. There you go. All right. So it pulls up. And then um, the next thing I try to like to do is pull out this guideline a little bit. Um, I don't like stick it down permanently. It's just loosely it just helps to put in the front pole i don't know if this is the correct way to do it but it's what i do
Ja, danke. So, we got our last piece. That'll be great. This is something else that's important. You want to keep this with your tent. This goes on the top, and I'll show you guys that. But this blocks the rain from being able to um, pour in your tent. Because if you see, there's a hole right there for this to be put through. So you take it off and try not to break your tripod. Again, the elastic broke. Can y'all see that? So I'm going to contact them asking for new poles. I don't know um, how they do that. Or if that's something they do. But yeah. So this is where I would put my pole in my tent. So you're just putting this front piece here. Y'all all right. <laughs> Try it again. There's a hole right there. This is hole. I was coming to shake. Now at this point, I like to go ahead and zip the door. That way, um, when I'm staking up the dot lines, I know the door will close fully. I'm gonna move you guys because y'all look really crooked right there. I don't know if that's gonna help. That looks better. All right, let's zip the door. I need to loosen up this piece a little bit and possibly bring this back down because the door is not closing all the way. Adjust the dot line. That's why I had to straighten out. Where am I going to stay down? Okay, so now I'm going to go around and stake these dot lines all the way around the tent and then the tent's pretty much pitched at this point. But before I forget, put this on top. This piece got caught in the fabric. Right. Let's do the dot lines. Yeah, bring you guys out a little
No, I still need to set the guidelines. Can I use the candy canes to set the guidelines? I still need to set the guidelines. I'm not done. You want to ride your scooter in the front for a little bit? Okay, watch out for the tripod so you don't knock it over. Okay. Just like last time, you want the guidelines kind of here, there, you know, back and forth so you don't have a lopsided tent. Okay. Move out the way so they can see. I'm showing them how to set the tent up. They can't see if you put your face in the camera. what I said, this is not a place to run around. Over there is your play set is at. It's a place for you to run around. Not over here. This one over here, over here, nothing yet. One more in the back.
there's some more plastic things that came out of those two as they're supposed to connect it together. So here's the back of the tent. I have these two skates left to do. No, I'm not done. I didn't um, prune all the skates in like to the ground and with this mallet that you can see has been taken a beating it makes it very difficult to do that so I would say about 30 minutes it takes me to set up this tent which is pretty realistic because I have my son that I have to stop and do stuff for or if I can't with the dog that's always something to stop and do stuff for. The pop-up tent, which you guys see my screen tent, um, that takes me maybe five minutes, if that. I don't bring the double bathroom tent unless I'm um, camping like with no facility. So the pop-up tent takes like two minutes. So I would say a total of like 35 minutes or so to set up camp. And if you want to add in like the air mattress and stringing lights and putting up chairs and all that stuff, I would say like 45 minutes. So just under an hour, I can have my whole camp set up if I bring like all the things. I don't always bring all the things with me on, um, let me set you guys up. I don't bring all the camping things with me for every camping trip. So don't let that scare you. But this is one of the reasons why I like to camp for three to four days at a time when I bring my belt tent. So I don't feel like I set all this stuff up for like 45 minutes as if I bring all the glamping things um, and have to take it down within a day. I don't like that. I don't really do overnight trips anymore. Um, I'm actually looking at doing um, hammock camping if I want to do like a quick overnight trip because that's way easier just to set up the hammock and maybe bring my screen tent um, and that's it but I don't want to um, do that with the bell tent because it does take me 
like 30 minutes to set it up by myself and it takes um, probably half the time, maybe 15 minutes if somebody else is with you. So I'm going to give you guys a little tour of the tent. I did find some rocks on the inside so I didn't need to sweep it out and stuff. It's always good to air your tent out. But let me get you a little tour of the tent so you can see everything that I have going on. So here's the tent. We'll walk around. Like I said, this is a 4M tent. This is typically how I would have stuff set up. I don't have everything staked in um, completely because I just wanted to air the tent out. I'm going to open up the windows too. So this mat is from Walmart, the chair I believe is from Walmart, and the umbrella is from Walmart as well. Uh, very inexpensive, I have two mats, one's here when I'm getting ready to power wash. So here's the tent, I always um, put a mat out tent and have my little chair. So you see there's a pole that goes all the way out. We have windows, which I'll go ahead and unzip. And for these windows, excuse me, you can roll them up like this. And um, tuck the strings in. There's a pocket over there and I'll show you guys in a minute. See that? There's that window. Here's a cargo pocket right there. And I don't know if these are going, but maybe you can hang stuff. Or I don't know. These things. But I've, these come in handy for clicking. There's two of them. So there's one there. And. Let's you guys up a little bit higher. You can see the um, stove, where the stove will go. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the tents and give you guys another view. So here's a view with the windows. You do feel breeze, but... Um, most of the breeze that you get, there's not the window I showed you earlier. Let's see if I can do it this way. That's better. And here's the pole. I just remember I told you you had that hook. So um, bring a hanger or something to hang your jackets, I guess. Most of the breeze you feel is from this door. Because you may have a bed here. It'd be a little difficult. Let me pull you guys up. We'll chat for a little bit. 